in the on the melting deck where our two induction furnaces are located. These furnaces use a, a magnetic current that actually encompasses the metal inside the furnace and heats it at a very quick and rapid uh, rate. In the old days it would take 10 to 12 hours to melt a uh, particular ca cast iron or ductile iron. And today's, with these induction furnaces, we're able to melt the metal within two, two and a half hours. Each one of these holds about two tons of metal. The iron that we use, we buy domestically, which is the iron ingot, which you'll take a look at. They look like small briquettes. And that's our standard gray iron. You see some remnants of uh, some scrap and some crushed engine block. And we utilize the crushed engine block to, it's some of the finest ductile iron made. And, and we utilize these parts the, that are blast and washed and we put them into the furnaces. Now behind this wall is the transformer and capacitors that run the induction furnaces. Um, Uh, the control panel is here, and the metallurgical analysis uh, computer lab is also right here. And this computer will help us tonight, as we're pouring ductile iron, tell us when the, the, the cast iron or ductile iron is ready uh, to be poured. We're now in the early part of the evening when our second shift arrives, and we begin the melting and pouring process. And right now what you're seeing is we're a floor molding facility. So we have to bring the metal from the furnaces, which right now this has been, uh, we're, we're pouring some aluminum. We got to bring that metal to the floor mold. So we, we do that by, you can see the tracks and um, uh, uh, rails that we use to transport the hot metal to the floor. Now we're getting ready to pour this aluminum. The aluminum right now, is about 1600 degrees. These molds are, consist of uh, decorative capitals or scroll work or access doors, something of that nature. Tonight, I believe these are Bishop's Crook capitals that are being poured in aluminum and there are another decorative element that goes on to the Bishop's Crook pole. He's beginning his pour, he's pouring it into the gate and as that fills up, you'll be able to see uh, the liquid metal rise to the top and probably puddle a little bit in some of the risers. And those risers are made, again, to uh, keep the mold from, or the metal from having any shrinkage or contraction. There you can see it's starting to puddle in the center of the mold. What's going to be interesting too, uh, aluminum cools rather quickly, so in a few minutes as they finish pouring some of the aluminum castings, we're going to be able to dump over some of these molds and you're going to be able to see uh, the raw castings right out of the sand. We have two reasons why we pour at night. Uh, the first reason is, as you see in the tour that we take, uh, there's a lot of activity during the day with the molding. Um, you can see how we bring the metal to the floor uh, by these overhead cranes and, and tracks and rails. Um, you don't want to have you know, 1,800 to 25, 2,800 degree metal overhead as, uh, with all the activity. So, you know, for safety reasons, we pour at night. And the second reason is the induction furnaces that we use uh, take a considerable amount of energy to fire them up and get the metal up to the 2,500 to 2,800 degrees. And we're fortunate where our facility is located, which is about 30 minutes from the nuclear uh, Limerick nuclear facility. And we pour in the off-peak hours at night uh, utilizing this nuclear power, so we're pretty pr proud to say that our carbon footprint is very little, if not any, uh, because we're using strictly nuclear power and we're off the grid. 
What we're watching now is actually one of the molds being dumped. This is the aluminum casting that was just poured about 20 minutes ago. You can see the Bishop's Crook ca uh, capitals in there. This, these are the decorative elements under about midway up the pole. As the smoke clears, you can see the decorative casting in its raw form. You also see the yellow portion there. That's the core that makes the uh, casting hollow. And that'll be when it get, takes down to one of the stations, what we call shakeout. They'll remove the sand off of it, break out the core with either a jackhammer or a vibrating um, rod that goes up inside the casting to break that sand core out. You can see the gating that where the, you know, the, the casting that's, or the non-decorative portion of it that's off the side, that's the gating where it was poured into the mold. You can see the decorative element again. Again, Spring City's noted for its detail and ornamentation and the Bishop's Crook uh, setup is really a good example of how much detail we can get into it. And you can see too how quickly aluminum solidifies. We poured these about no more than 20 minutes ago and they're already, they're still hot, probably around six, 700 degrees, but they're at its uh, solid state and it'll be cooled to the touch probably in the next 30 minutes to an hour. Right now you're taking a look at one of the bowls that's gonna be transporting the liquid ductile iron to the molding station. It's being preheated by a torch and you can see obviously the intense heat that's um, being uh, displayed onto the bowl. It's about right now a little over a thousand plus degrees, maybe even hotter. But the metal that's gonna be getting in there is gonna be close to 2800 degrees. And keeping this bowl uh, at a high temperature minimizes any decrease in temperature while we're transporting the metal to the floor. The bulls that you're looking at are made of a, the, first of all, it's a, it's a cast iron and steel bull that's lined with a, a special liner that can take heat, intense heat, of well over 3,000 degrees. The metal that's going in obviously is around 2,800 degrees, so there's no way that the bull uh, will fail because of the intense heat from the metal that's inside it because it can withstand the heat of the 2800 degrees ductile iron. So we're taking the hopper over the induction furnace and about ready to implement the first charge of the night. We're dropping the iron ingot into the furnace and you're going to see a nice little fire explosion. There's some of the scrap metal that was just dropped into the furnace. Some of that is the old gating and risers crushed engine block, and of course, iron ingot. These furnaces were preheated for about the last hour or so. And again, with an induction furnace, it's a magnetic field that charges the metal inside and creates a energized field that heats and melts the metal instantly. Tonight's pour, again, is going to get up to about 2,800 degrees because we are pouring ductile iron. It's closing the top of the furnace to retain the heat and intensify the heat inside the furnace. In my hand right now is some magnesium ferrous silicate. And this mineral is placed inside the bowl. And as the liquid iron is being poured into the bowl, you're going to see uh, a white flash and almost sparkles come out of the bowl. And this is what helps manipulate the iron and treat the iron to get to its ductile rating of about 65,000 yield. Now he's scraping off some of the impurities that rise to the top. 
but we'll call it fluxing and Right now, he's pouring in the magnesium ferrous silicate that you saw earlier in my hand, and that's gonna help treat the metal to get it to its ductile rate. Again, loading some more of the magnesium ferrous silicate. He's gonna put it in the other bowl. These Bishop Crook poles, uh, are so large that we pour two bowls simultaneously. One of the guys just put a cover on top of one of the bowls. That's to keep the heat uh, from the preheated bowls, the heat inside the bowl, so that the iron um, has a lesser chance of cooling as it's being transported from the furnace to the floor. Again, there's the white flash from the magnesium ferrous silicate and the iron being treated to get to the ductile rating of 65,000 yield. Liquid iron pours with the viscosity of like motor oil and uh, like molasses. It pours really slow. So your wall thicknesses are usually three eighths to half of an inch, uh, that void that we see between the core and the pattern. Now we're taking the bowl out to the floor. Here comes the second bowl with the liquid ductile iron. and he's gonna set up at the other side of the pole where the other gate is, and they're gonna pour simultaneously as we talked earlier when we were watching the metal being poured into the bowl. Now they're pouring the ductile iron into the Bishop's Crook mold. And they wanna remain pretty consistent at both ends as the iron moves through the mold. Now the, it's, it's an extremely volatile process. Uh, you can see the C-clamps and wedges, that's holding the mold together because the iron rushing through there wants to push that air out and of course all the gases that are being emitted from the core, it wants to get out. These molds would take about two to three hours to cool and then what will happen is later in the evening as these are cooled they'll dump these flasks over take the castings over to what we call shake out kind of what you saw with the, with the smaller castings uh, the aluminum castings that were dumped over they'll clear this floor and have the empty flasks ready for the molders in the morning to repeat the whole process over again. Typically our product takes eight to ten weeks to manufacture from start to finish.